And we're in. We're in. We're here. Hell and queer. Hell. <laughs> it's every time. Every time somebody says we're here, I immediately want to go. You gotta throw it queer. in. Yeah. Hello, everybody. Hello, hello. Welcome to Ginger Unscripted, your yes. favorite candid conversation with two gingers, one real, one fake. Who's who? We don't know. You tell us. You tell us right now. Yes. Stop what you're doing. Pause the video. Stop it. Comment. Who's the real? Who's one? the real ginger? Yeah. It's I who was born with it. You can't tell. Can't tell. Can't tell. <laughs> well, the lighting really, really brings out the yeah. the deep red. Yeah, this lighting is much the red more red forty two in you. Red forty. <laughs> am, am I illegal in other countries? <laughs> <laughs> probably. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> your videos are probably banned in China. Oh, definitely. Um, yeah. That's what you get for being a, a strong, my, powerful woman. My murderous videos are yeah. probably banned in many locations. Mm -hmm. Anyways, and probably your new mob videos. Yeah. You tell the audience what you've been up to. Yeah, I've been filming this past week for this new rage of these apps that are coming out. And they're pretty much like the TikTok version of movies. And mm -hmm. a lot of them are very soapy, very like mafia, Sudsy. mob boss. Yeah, sudsy, bubbly, <laughs> all of that. Wet and wild. Oh, yeah. I thought we were just going <laughs> with like a bad Some of them are pretty theme. spicy. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so my character this past week was really fun to play. Francesca? She's um, Vivian. Okay, <laughs> same, same thing. <laughs> kind of similar vibes. Yeah. Um, but Is she, she Italian? She... Uh, I would say she would be. Did so you make her Italian? It makes sense. Are all your characters Italian? Not all <laughs> of them. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but it would make sense for her. She's like the sister to a billionaire, like in a billionaire Ooh. family. Her brother inherits the, the, the big bucks. Yeah. The big bees. And I'm like the, the lead dog that, mer like, I'm like the, I handle the dark side Ooh. of the family business. Okay. So I, you know, kill the people How off. How long are these clips? I, yeah, that's what everybody's been asking me. <laughs> I have no idea how okay. long it's going to end up being. You it was a pretty chunky script, and you go through so many pages in a day. It's very interesting. Okay. It's very much run like a soap opera. Yeah, I did yeah. General Hospital, and it was yeah. like that. Like they yep. do 100 pages a day, yeah, and I was like, this is crazy. Crazy. But it was fun. That's nuts. Very fast. What about you? How's your week? <laughs> You know, there's some stuff I've been dealing with off camera. Yeah. Um, you don't do everything on camera, Zach? No, sorry. Sorry, guys. Uh, I've been good. I've been pretty <laughs> good. I feel like I have been uh, hopefully entering a new phase of my career. Ooh, yeah. I made some changes behind the scenes. I have been sprucing up my materials. I just put together like yeah. a new press kit. Nice. I freshened up my voice reel. Mm. I actually added some of my smut without the smut in Ooh. it. But I, I was thinking about it. I was like, oh, yeah, this I've had this consistent voiceover gig for the last two years. That should be represented in my reel. Totes. Um, so I just like took some of the stuff, and I was like, oh, this is funny. It's only going to be used for internal use, but should they know? Hey. Uh, but I'm also hoping to soon branch out into the like audiobook world. Yeah. Trying to, trying to get that done. That'd be great. And uh, I have a wedding that I'm going to, <gasps> a college bud. Nice. Getting married, heading up to Santa Barbara. Oh, Santa so Barbara's low. so pretty. Should I go bow tie or tie? I mean, I'm more of a Thai yeah, me too. appreciator yeah. personally. But I like I like showing up like a grandpa and just being like, no one will see me as a sexual object today. They'll leave me alone. Yeah, okay, I, I put then on a bow tie and bow tie I'm like, I'm like I feel safe. You know? But then you might find you attract a, a the grandma. opposite. <laughs> <laughs> My <laughs> husband <laughs> back in the war. I, I remember a bow tie when just like that. he yeah. wore a bow tie. Yeah. Yeah, it could be. I feel like. For years now, I've dressed like ironically like a grandpa because it is funny to me. But after a certain point, it no longer becomes ironic. It just mm, becomes like who you are. Who you are. Yeah. So I'm like, eh. um, speaking of that, yeah. we need to address the mm -hmm. elephant in the room. Zach's inability yeah. to match when I told him where red. Well, you said red. And what is this? this is, well, to be fair, partial to, red. To be fair, <laughs> you only sent me a picture of like half a sleeve. Yeah. So I, I wear okay. I think generally though, I wear a lot of solids, and you tend to wear more patterns. Yeah, that's true. Um, but I thought it would match. But I'm realizing now, since because it's it's redder, oh, it's redder. That's <laughs> <laughs> the people. You owe us. You owe me money for that now, guys. You owe me thirty five cents. Uh, it's a lot redder on the bottom, but we're 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 matching with the crosses. Yes, we are. And so let's address this. Are you are you a follower of Jesus? <laughs> I'm not, so uh, that's why I feel comfortable asking you. 
I I am. I do yeah. believe in Jesus. We got a Jesus in girl here, guys. <laughs> someone's going to heaven. Someone's going to hell. The fake ginger gets to go to heaven. The real one goes to hell because you got a soul because it's not the way you were born. But uh, no, I'm not a follower of Jesus. Uh, <laughs> like if he if he was around, like I would definitely like follow him around town. But I wouldn't be like, you live in my heart forever and always. You are he, you are king of kings. You are he above hall. He, you are capital G, G-O-D. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I would be a lot happier if, like, Christianity, like, we all agreed that Jesus and God were dogs. Huh? Like, you know, like, the opposite of God is dog. Mm-hmm. Um, so, like, if, like, I'm just saying, like, in a fictitious world <laughs> where Christianity isn't, like, a white dude in the sky, mm-hmm. he's, like, he's, like, a poodle then, like, I'd be right on board. I'd be like, yes, my Lord and Savior is a dog. Mm. <laughs> Count me in. <laughs> but, uh, no, I don't believe in buying clothes uh, firsthand. I only buy secondhand clothing. Mm-hmm. And I found this at a thrift store, and it reminded me of clothes I used to wear as a child, like long sleeve polo. Yeah. And I think I look snazzy in it. You so know what I'm it wearing it despite of? Jesus. Oh. Not in favor of. All right. Sorry if that is <laughs> uh, heret- heretic- heretical. Heretical? Heretical. It's something. Yeah. You know what it reminds me of? Mm. You Selling know Bibles? how for the 4th of July... Well, oh. Selling Bibles. Well, that. <laughs> but um, you know how on the 4th of July, like, especially a lot of I white... I do know, yeah. Yeah, you mm-hmm. especially a lot of white families will all wear matching, like, red, white, and blue yes. Old Navy shirts. Yeah, this could be that. That is mm-hmm. giving me that vibe. You know, I feel comfortable, like... Not speaking ill of Jesus, but like being on the opposite side because I, you know, part of me would be like, you shouldn't say that on the internet. Like now we're going to lose the Christian followers. However, you still got them covered. (laughs) So, so I'm, I, I have the non-Christians. We got the non-believers and the believers both covered in the room. You know, I think it's more so, so I don't know if we should talk about religion, but it's not that I'm like against Mm -hmm. specifically Jesus or whatever. Um, it's the way that I look at it is like the Bible itself mm-hmm. has been translated so many times mm-hmm. and it was written so long after Jesus's death. Mm-hmm. And especially like back in the day, like before we had technology, like everything was like so uncertain. So I understand the role of like religion and like giving people that faith and that higher power. But like I don't trust men to not have adjusted <laughs> the word of God for their own beliefs. Mm-hmm. And also there's a lot of different religions out there. So at this point in my life, I don't feel comfortable picking one over another. Cause mm-hmm. what if you pick wrong? And, um, <laughs> so, you know, I'm more of like a karma guy, mm-hmm. like a, Hey, just do your best, be a good person for the sake of being a good person, love everybody. And then hopefully when I die, if Jesus or Buddha or whoever is up there, <laughs> they'll look at me and they're like, listen, you didn't sign any papers. <laughs> You didn't give any churches any money, but you were a good guy. And now we're not going to send you to eternal damnation. But if they do, I feel like the cool people will be there. So at least I won't suffer alone. And uh, that's a quick little anecdote on Zach's religious beliefs. Wonderful. Yeah. So. <laughs> Sorry, are you uncomfortable talking about Jesus? No, not at all. Okay. What do you like about Jesus? <laughs> <laughs> is it his uh, sick haircut? <laughs> that's totally what it is. Yeah. Jesus just has those <laughs> luscious locks. Yeah. I mean, the mandals and the man <laughs> bun. You can't go wrong. Um, to be honest, in my mm-hmm. personal life experience, because I grew up very much a non-believer, I was very much like a kind of black and white person. Like, if mm-hmm. unless something was literally in front of my face, like I had no business believing in something that I didn't have, like concrete foundational yeah proof of in the sense and i also grew up way more um spiritual too with uh kind of how my mom raised me and Mm -hmm. she's very into astrology and i heard a lot more of like those things i did like go to catholic school and grew up and and that was not like you know when i was younger so i was it more just led me away school yeah which did the same it more led me away from the church than it did you guys are not cool I yeah, don't hang out with yeah. You. I, like, I hate being you're in this very, sweaty, hot church. You're very mean to me, yeah. and I'm asking what I believe to be very logical questions right. for an eight-year-old, and I'm branded a heretic. Right. So, yeah, it's more just um, the life experiences that I've yeah. had that have held moments that kind of felt supernatural in a sense, where Jesus-y. I really felt like, yeah, I really felt like God was... God is good. ...putting these... It's just like yeah. speaking things to me directly through these experiences that. that really made me feel like, okay. I but I, I, t- I tell people all the time, like, 
I don't necessarily always say I'm Christian, although I go to a sure. Christian church. I always say I'm a believer because yeah. I there's That's a why lot. That's I asked. I was like, yeah. are, you, are you a follower of Jesus? Yeah, there's a lot of stuff, like you said, with um, the history the of, Holy Crusades. you know, of... <laughs> well, that was the, that was the Catholics. <laughs> yeah, but well, those even Christians with, aren't any better. With religions in general, there's yeah. so much um, of the not so great stuff that people bring to it. Yeah. But I like to always say that, God like, is good. you know, I don't want to judge uh, a belief to God mm-hmm. based off of how people have misrepresented yeah. that said belief. That's totally I fair. just know my mm-hmm. own personal yeah. experience and how it's worked wonders in my life. And I love that. And I, and I'm a supporter of other people like, you know, having their faith and believing that like I've, cause I do, I do have friends that are like o- almost like antagonistically mm-hmm. like anti-religion and they will essentially become the thing that they were pushing up against. Where I'm like, well, you are judging mm. someone based off their beliefs just as much as somebody judged you based off your beliefs. Mm-hmm. And I do find the attractive, or I find it attractive to like have a belief in a higher power. And I love, like, I have many religious friends, and I love talking to them about it and hearing like their background and how they think about it. And I think there is something nice about being like, well, I trust that there is someone bigger than me. I trust that even if things are not going well for me, that there is a there is a grander plan, and I can put my faith in God. Even if I'm not believing in myself, I can believe in the creator, the person I made. And there's something really attractive about that, and I appreciate that. But, yeah, I'm not an organized, institutional <laughs> kind of guy. <laughs> yeah, uh, I think you'd but be... But I, I would love to just be able to walk around and be like, you know, Theo Vaughn, where, like, people on the street will be like, what are you looking for? He's like, just looking for the Lord, brother. <laughs> like, the same thing with me saying, like, uh, when I when my brain impulsive oh. thought is, like, when someone's like, we're here, and we're like, we're queer, I just want to be like, God is good. Praise the man. Praise him above. You know, I do find joy in that. But... uh I think you would be really intrigued by the book. It's on Spotify called mm-hmm. Conversations with God. I just Ooh. finished it. It's an audiobook, and it's not okay. what you would think it is at about all. Somebody who gets really high and thinks you're talking to God. Yes, exactly. <laughs> I was pretty like, much. I, pretty I was much. Like, it's yeah, about it's, this it's, guy, and he yeah. he turned his conversation with God, this experience that he had, yeah. um, into a book. And it's not at all what you would think. Like the things that he unpacks in it, it's. I think the perspective in that yeah. book is something that you would more align okay. with than because it's very much like not to do with religion sure. or anything more just about like yeah. God, the creator. Yeah, I'm just not a fan of churches yeah, I based on my own personal experiences. I do. And I any institution of power I'm suspicious mm-hmm. of, not just the religious ones, the money ones too. Mm-hmm. <laughs> money. <laughs> what? what was that? <laughs> I was <laughs> <laughs> can, I, can we hear that again? <laughs> <laughs> that <laughs> just a continuation of your life. That <laughs> <laughs> was like a Wario noise. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I wish I could do an impression uh, on the spot. Yeah. I don't think I have one either. No. It's like, it's like, like everybody Waluigi's like, <laughs> That's a good one. Everybody tells me I, um, I laugh like Toadette. <laughs> <laughs> so dead. I can't one, think of it on the one spot. One day though. when our podcast is uh is bigger and we have like a space and we basically have like the coordinator that just stays on the computer to like fact check us in real time, we'll be like, Toadette noise? And yeah. Then, yeah. Boo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. All right, well, uh, we've addressed the elephants in the room. Yes. We have one follower of Jesus. We have <laughs> someone who likes Jesus apparel and uh really like likes the group aspect of it and <laughs> wishes I could, like, uh, but uh, I went to, like, a Lutheran school from pre-K to fifth grade, mm-hmm. so I have a, my parents are interesting, they grew up very, very Catholic, mm-hmm. and so when they came together in their holy union, they decided <laughs> that uh, they didn't want to uh, put religion on their kids when they're young, mm-hmm. they would more so just raise them with the beliefs that they thought were important, mm-hmm. and then when they are of age, they can decide what religion yeah. they want, which I'm very, very happy for. Yeah. However, my father thought that if we didn't grow up with like a foundation and understanding of religion we would churn crazy later like Um. we'd go the whole we'd like churn into like a holy roller Mm. so then i went to this religious school uh (laughs) and like did not have the best experiences but again that that was kind of more based on the people yeah rather than the thing and and i did get a good education but from pre-k to fifth grade like one of my subjects was religion yeah and like we went to chapel every wednesday i had the same thing uh we had like a vicar who taught at the school yep uh, that's a real word, guys. Vicar. It's like in the Christianity, Luther. It's like before you're like a priest or a pastor, like you're a vicar. And they like lived out back. 
Interesting. <laughs> yeah, weird, right? <laughs> what is what is one thing, a positive thing, you feel like how that school affected you as a human being? You know, is the there nothing positive? The thing is, where I grew up in San Diego County, especially in like the late 90s, early 2000s, the public schools were not great. Mm-hmm. And we were not super well off. Uh, but our parent, my parents made the decision to like kind of tighten their belts so that they could send us to this like private school. I don't remember what tuition was. It was maybe like 1500 bucks. But back then, that was, that, was, that was a lot for us. So I will say the quality of the education, because eventually I did switch to public school, the quality of the education I got was better. Uh, you know, just smaller classes and that kind of thing and teachers that kind of taught us like how to study and how to think for yourself. So I do feel like it set me up pretty well like for academic success later in life. Um, but like all of my close childhood friends came after I left that school. There was a lot of mm. like class structure because a lot uh, of kids were rich mm-hmm. and we were not rich. Mm. So I was bullied a lot. Mm. Uh, I was also a very tiny ginger kid. Mm-hmm. And uh, gingers may be cool now, kids, <laughs> but let me tell you what. <laughs> back then. Back then, we had kick a ginger day. <gasps> um, yeah. Legitimately? Oh, yeah. It was a big thing. And like people got expelled across the country. Cause, like, was it like once a month, once a week? No, it was like once a year. Um, wow. But it, I found out later, apparently the ginger hate is really, really bad in Australia, of huh. all places. I have a new Australian friend. I'll have ask to ask him about her. it. Ask yeah. him how they, they might say some weird stuff. Interesting. Uh, but yeah, that was a good experience. And, <laughs> you know, I think it's good that I, like, have an understanding of religion. And, like, I know my, like, you know, stories of, like, Cain and Abel. And, like, mm-hmm. uh, what's the one dude where, like, he was an angel and he, like, imposed upon the blind lady and stayed with her and she like made him bread every day and she was always going to run out but every single day there was just a little bit more Mm -hmm. you know which one i'm talking about i don't know the name Uh, but yes oh uh king saul was going to chop the baby in half Mm -hmm. to find out who the real mom was there's some crazy (laughs) stuff you know know you're uh yeah (laughs) spare the rod spoil the child aka beat your kids or they'll turn out terrible (laughs) uh i know abraham was gonna like kill his kid for god and then god was like nah it's all right just give me a little bit of his (laughs) pee-pee (laughs) <laughs> These are all real things in the Bible, guys. <laughs> Abraham. We need uh, a, we need Mo- a YouTube Moises. video <laughs> of your rendition. <laughs> yeah, like, like, like drunk <laughs> history Bible with stories. Zach's Bible yes. stories. You know, I read through uh, the book of Genesis and half of the book of Exodus mm-hmm. as a kid. And then, like, I have friends, especially in San Diego County, that are very religious. And they'll read the Bible for fun. And I'm like, good on you. Yeah. Not me, though. Yeah. Couldn't be. Mm-hmm. I'll stick to smut. Well, a whole different ballgame. <laughs> I like to do a mix of both. Yeah. <laughs> I, don't, I actually don't read smut. That's a joke. Oh, I do. I make and it. And I up. also read the Bible. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, hey, hold on. Billion dollar idea. A smutty Bible. Oh, no. No? I Like a Book of Mormon kind of thing, but for the Bible. You do you. <laughs> you know, I feel like uh, Passion of the Christ. So here's here's how I really upset a lot of like super religious people. Uh <laughs> But I only I don't do it to people. I want to be very clear. Mm-hmm. I do not make fun of you if you're religious. I only make fun of you if you're an asshole. Mm-hmm. And then I pick the thing that's most important to you. So if you're an <laughs> asshole and it turns out you're religious, like especially like in San Diego County, I just walk up to people like, and you know th- they would just say something super misogynistic to somebody, and then I just turn around. I'm like, hey, you know Jesus was gay, right? And they get so mad. And I'm like, hold on, think about it. Homie hung out with twelve other dudes, <laughs> washing each other's feet, and one of them was named Peter. So, <laughs> and they get so so mad, mm-hmm. and then I'm like, "Listen, Jesus said to love your neighbor, love your man, turn the other cheek." She's also Jesus was probably a pretty cool dude. First of all, probably gay. Second of all, he dated a sex worker. Third of all, was into feet. Like you put those things together, probably <laughs> probably a pretty chill person. And they would get so 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 so. Oh mad. man, yeah, I can imagine. Well, I'm an instigator. Yeah, well. Sorry to bring up religion. Only the people that deserve it. Yes. No, I yeah. <laughs> but again, if you're an asshole and you're not religious, but like you're really into cars, then I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna like talk to you about that. You know? Well, um, I I, I think we can yeah. Can, let's move we on. Can wrap this yeah. up and move on to. If some you're offended by my comments, just know that I love you a lot and I respect you loving Jesus. And, and if I you're think offended Jesus by him, just listen to me. Yeah, Dorothy's got <laughs> your back. She's going to heaven. She believes in God. But I do believe in my heart that if I met Jesus, we'd be friends. I feel like he'd like me. I, I, rock, I rock with that. I feel confident in that. <laughs> like, we'd be buds. <laughs> like, like, I'm all about goodness and loving your neighbor and being a cool guy and being chill and, you know, dying if you gotta, you know, for your people. I'd do that. I don't know who my people are, but if you're out there, I'd die for you. 
right. Let's get to the viewer comments. Okay, we gotta, great. We got to steer this ship. <laughs> we got to get, get out of here. <laughs> okay. Desi Adams asked, what is your favorite meal slash dessert you like making for others to impress them? You're like, ooh, I want these ooh. people to like me. I'm going to make this. You go first. Cookies. Nice. Easy. Yeah. Everybody loves cookies. What kind? It depends on the crowd. Chocolate chip is like an easy go-to. Yeah. I just brought the final day on wrap for what we were filming that week. I brought like five dozen cookies homemade. Yeah. Um, and I made vegan and non-vegan because we had a couple of vegans on set. Nice. And they were like over they the moon it. about it. And it's like the easiest way to make everybody love you is to bring yeah. cookies home baked. I will... Yeah. I'm not trying to impress people unless it's like I'm like on a date or something. Mm -hmm. But I love cooking for my friends, so usually I'll just make like a big Italian meal. Like mm -hmm. I'll make some like like what like uh, we have like a family like s marinara sauce mm -hmm. like gravy. So I'll just make like spaghetti meatballs, mm -hmm. or we have another. I mean, Italian food is so freaking simple. Why haven't you made me spaghetti meatballs? Dad? Have I not? No, you have cooked for me though. What did I make? I don't know, but it was really good. I don't remember. You Wasn't it like some sort of steak thing? You came over. I don't, it was this was so long ago. Is that the place I'm at now? I you know or was it when house? we were all hanging out? There was like a few of us and we were drinking and you had like heated up like leftover. Oh, did I make of you that like steak steak thingy cart? I remember making you like a breakfast sandwich. A breakfast sandwich? Oh. There was a breakfast sandwich. Yeah, that was day? after we came back from brunch that one time. Oh. Oh, I yeah. And I don't we even remember that no, day. No, I think it was <laughs> no, I think it was a different day. We we were gonna film content, but not everybody got to film their content. Mm. Some people took too long, but I made everybody like breakfast sandwiches. I don't remember making you. Hmm. Anyways, anyways, I'll I'll cook for you. I would like spaghetti and meatballs. Thank you. All right. Uh, we also <laughs> have like a recipe that I really like. It just <laughs> translates to chicken and spaghetti. Okay. And it's super good. So yeah, but my go-to is like I'll Pasta. just make a big meal. Yeah. Great. Love mm -hmm. it. Yeah. Wonderful. On the meal topic, since last time we were talking about uh, things you miss from home. Mm -hmm. Jay Bonkers asks, do you have a specific dish that your parents made that you miss the most from be living at home? You know, this is not a real recipe. I feel like it's something my mom made up. It's literally called steak a bitsiole. Okay. Yeah. What is that? It's like, it's kind of like a mix between like, uh, it's kind of like Italian pot roast. You ever had Italian pot roast? Mm, probably. Yeah. It's kind of like that. It's it's like you slow cook like uh, some type of meat, whether it's like shoulder or chuck or okay. something. Um, and you cook it in like tomatoes and like you add like potatoes and carrots and then you serve it over like pasta. Okay. Um, so it's kind of like, it's kind of like an Italian pot roast Yummy. mixed with like a, but I always try to look at it and I've had my mom, I feel bad asking because I've made her tell me the recipe so many times mm -hmm. now, but I don't remember it and I haven't written it down. Mm -hmm. So now I just don't ask. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> so if you're listening, mom. Tell Please me, give tell me, me the <laughs> recipe. <laughs> what about you? My mom, similar. Like I think my mom just made this up. I don't know where she got it from, but she called it taco pie, and it was like she had this circle dish, and she would layer tortilla, ground beef, cheese, tortilla, ground beef, <laughs> cheese, tortilla, ground beef, cheese, and it was just like this layered thing. And then she would cut it into like pie slices after she baked it, yeah. and then you'd have it with like sour cream, salsa, whatever you wanted. And that thing was so, it's so simple. I, I should make yeah. it at home, but so good. Yeah, we had like like a chili dip that was literally mm. just like you'd make chili. And then you would line a pan yes. with like a ton of cream cheese. Mm -hmm. You'd throw the chili down. You'd throw a bunch more cheese on it and you'd bake it. And I've made this for several different like parties and stuff. Mm. It's like people, Banger. Are, people are licking the glass. Yeah. And they're like, this is so good. And I'm like, it's just cheese and chili, brother. That's why. You ever had chili con carne? Chili con carne. Mm. It's like chili on like top of like pasta. Oh no! But that this sounds like something I'd be down for. It's this old school chili joint. For a while there, I was really and I was gonna try to make it a series, and then I n I like did it once, and I was like, this is too much. <laughs> but I was going around like all the like the old school diner places in uh -huh. LA, and I found it's called like I think it's called Chili John's. I, it might be off Magnolia, but okay. it's like in Burbank. It's this like old school, literally chili joint. Mm -hmm. You walk in, and it's like one of those like. U-shaped 
diner counters Mm -hmm. where it's just like all the people, all the restaurateurs are in the middle and then it's just a bunch of bar seats Mm. and they just sell old fashioned chili. That's it? (laughs) Yeah. I mean, you can have like a chili dog, you can have it over pasta, you can have it over rice. Mm. And so I went in there and like one day I was just like super hungry and I just ordered like one of their like weird chili dogs and it had like Fritos in it and Mm. stuff. (laughs) 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 I'm hungry. uh, I got like, I love Arnold Palmer's. That's like my favorite Uh, Mountain Alco drink. And like, you can tell it's going to be good when you walk in. They just have like a big pitcher of just black tea that's been sitting there because yeah. you can just have tea sit out for a while yeah and i was like oh okay and like the place is like run down but it was it was good that check it out i think it's called chili john's noted yeah have you tried tommy's tommy's burgers tommy's yeah like yeah, they, yeah 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 but with like the chili yeah, the yeah, chili dogs the chili, yeah. mm-hmm. you like it i do they're chili which i appreciate more for like hamburger it's not as good standalone chili because mm. it's more of like a paste. I've only had it like on the dogs or hamburgers. Uh, yeah, well, yeah, that's, that's the way to have it. Yeah, but uh, yeah, that'll that's good. But that's gonna like uh, that's gonna you know give you some some alone time to eat that. <laughs> 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 gonna, I'm like, what's the most? Don't delicate worry way to about that. that. <laughs> yeah. All right, it's great, <laughs> but it's for a short while. For a short while, you're gonna I, I, like when I I tell people that I uh, have to go take a business meeting in the bathroom <laughs> and I should not be disturbed. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm gonna curb this. Yeah. Gabby asked, um, "How did you find out Santa wasn't real?" You know, I was a I was an annoying, suspicious kid. Mm -hmm. So early on, I was like, no way. Ain't no way. Wow. So I was like, there's no way. This guy's, uh, you tell me this guy goes around the whole world and he fits through chimneys. Mm -hmm. What if you don't have a chimney? Okay. What if, why does Santa give less presents to poor kids and (laughs) more presents to rich kids? So I think I was like pretty young and I just like sat my parents down and I was like, enough's enough. Yeah. Give it to me straight. And they were like, Santa's not real. Don't tell your siblings. And I have an older brother, and he went on believing for quite some time. Oh, wow. That's funny. I didn't spoil it. (laughs) Nice. Got close a few times. Like, he got me real mad, and I was like, you don't know that I could ruin your (laughs) world right now. I could shatter everything you you believe in. Did you find out, like, all of them at the same time? Like, the Tooth Fairy, East, did you connect them all simultaneously? Yeah, I think so. I was like, yeah, Mm. there's there's nothing right. And, like, my parents were suspicious, because I was like, well, why can't I stay awake and try to (laughs) trap this fucker? (laughs) That's (laughs) because (laughs) <laughs> and they were like, Zach, it's us. Like, you just have to go Damn. to bed. Yeah, I was... Uh, You're asking too many questions, man. Just I, accept it. I'm not that <laughs> guy. And I was a very suspicious, investigatory mm. kid. You know, I like to read, like, I the see. series of unfortunate events and stuff. Loved like loved that series. Yeah, it's a good one. Yeah. Did you finish it? Yeah, a long time ago. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I love that book. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What I, uh... I used to get so excited Christmas Eve. So like I would, I would get like nervous excitement, tummy aches and <laughs> I'm so excited. <laughs> literally, <laughs> literally. And, um, and in the middle of the night when I was, I don't know what age I was, I like walked out so my mom could give me like some tummy, some tums or something, some tummy yeah. medicine. And I saw my mom and my brother like putting stuff <laughs> under the tree. And I was like, <laughs> what is no. this? When I, my mom was like shooing me away, shooing me, shooing. And then uh, the next day, you know, I think I asked my mom and she's like, oh, you know, we were, we were just helping out yeah. Santa. Yeah. And I think I asked one of my brothers and my brother was like, nah, like, <laughs> you know, get over that shit. But I still <laughs> believe, yeah, but I still believed everything else. Yeah, Easter um, and Tooth Fairy. Yeah, but you know when I connected the dots with the Tooth Fairy? Hmm. So when my parents got divorced, yeah. Um, you're like, how are they going to find me at would, dad's house? Yeah, well, when I would lose a tooth at mom's house, the tooth fairy would give me $20. You got $20 per tooth? And then when I lost a tooth in my dad's house, the tooth fairy would give me 50 cents. Yeah, I was like, <laughs> I, was, I, was, I was getting like a quarter. And I was like, why is the tooth fairy skimping me only when I'm at dad's house? This. Wow, your mom's a real one. I can't believe she was giving you a She's crisp a very 20. generous, yeah, a very generous tooth I, fairy. Dang. Thanks, I, mom. Yeah, I think I was getting like 50 cents to a dollar. <laughs> teeth are valuable. Yeah, that started to connect those dots after a while. Did you ever like, hang on to any like childhood like bodily things like teeth or hair? My mom or had or a bunch of my teeth for a while. I, I didn't, but I bet she's wonder, mom, do you still have them in your closet? Because <laughs> I know at some point she had like a box of my teeth. <laughs> I think I'll <laughs> save my kid's teeth. I don't know. Yeah? Yeah. What are you going to do if you just toss it out? Yeah. 
I don't know. It's one of those things, like, I think what my mother's told me is, like, you keep it forever, and then at some point you're like, why the fuck yeah, do we do still have this? Have this? Yeah. yeah. I yeah. when they were a kid. I, yeah. Did I tell you my, like, scab story? No. Like, uh, maybe this is gross, so just feel free to cut me off. But <laughs> I, for a while, I was saving, like, oh, no. a, an important scab in my life. So when I was about 10, I got really, really sick. Okay. I, like, had appendicitis, and I, like, it almost ruptured. So my mom rushed me to the hospital. Okay. And then you're supposed to be good to go once they take you out. I was not getting better. Okay. I wound up, I was in the hospital for like two months. Mm -hmm. uh, I didn't know at the time because I was like 10 years old. I found out much later that it was like pretty freaking serious. And I, I didn't have much time left before. Oh. Uh, yeah. And so it turns out, spoiler, um, I guess during this, there was a complication during the surgery and one of my bowels got nicked. Okay. Uh, and so I was kind of just like leaking inside oh. internally which is not a thing that's good for you. No. <clears throat> and so eventually, like, because thank God my mom's like an ICU nurse, so she was like hounding these doctors, being like, there's something not right, there's something not right. Yeah. I remember I got like MRIs, I got a CAT scan, I did all this stuff, and she would, all I wanted to do was sleep. I was in so much pain all the time. I had an old doctor that was giving me this drug, though, called Demerol, because mm -hmm. it was like old school, and that shit was nice. Let me tell you what. <laughs> I was like a 10-year-old junkie. I was like, what, when am I getting my next fix, you know? But uh, so eventually they like do another CAT scan, whatever they find out. They're like, oh, <laughs> shit, there's a lot of shit inside this kid. Mm -hmm. And so they cut me open. They like open me up. Like and so I have this huge scar from the top of my belly button, like all the way down. OK, they opened me up. Sorry, guys. Team, I skip this. <laughs> um, scooped out my guts, went through it, fixed it, took out the liters of crap. Apparently I had like two liters of crap inside of me. Oh, my. Um, and then I got better. <laughs> but obviously. I had like I have a huge scar, and so I had a big scab like uh. covering the wound and like covering my belly button, uh -huh. and eventually it fell out. And I was a ten year old boy, uh -huh. so I was like, I'm keeping this. Like mm -hmm. this is my trophy. Like I this was Just a surviving. Yeah, I survived. This is like mm -hmm. hard one, and so I kept it like in my sock drawer, uh, just in a baggie, <laughs> <laughs> like in a little baggie, and it was like you know it was maybe like this big. You Did know? the bag have a label? No, it was no, just like a little like sandwich baggie. And then one day I like came home and the scab is gone. Apparently it grossed my brother out so much. We didn't even live in the same room anymore. <laughs> and he took it upon himself to go and grab my scab bag and throw it out. Did you feel Yeah, I was so violated. upset, bro. I was like, you, you jerk. Like, that was Damn. my scab. So Do I you never think you would still have it today? Yeah, I think if so. You had <laughs> yeah, I think so. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> it's like, you know, it was a memento and like I didn't have anything else from that time. Or yeah. no, I... I remember a nurse gave me like a beanie baby. Like I uh -huh. had apparently I had like great staff around me because my mm -hmm. mom worked in the hospital. Yeah. So they were all really nice to me. Nice. Um, so I just had this beanie baby and a scab. But wow. uh, yeah. Let us know below Memorabilia. in the comments if you've ever saved like your teeth. Yeah. Or like something that was like important to you. A or, like, bodily thing. Yeah, or like a cast or like a fingernail. Oh, cast or something. Smell. Yeah. 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 You, ever, you ever had a cast? Ever broken a bone? Dorothy? Never broken a bone. Whoa. No, so I've never <laughs> I had to fix that. Just I beg your <laughs> finest, <laughs> Martin. <laughs> what have you broken? Uh, many things. I've broken my hand, my fingers, my wrists. Damn, bro. Yeah. Uh, what have you been doing? Uh, well, one time when I was a kid, <laughs> <laughs> I was like maybe five years old, and uh, we were at like my brother's like t-ball game, uh -huh. and I don't know if you've ever like seen like you know like youth baseball fields and stuff but they usually have like a like a tool shed of some sort mm -hmm. but you can get on top of the shed <laughs> to view it's like it's like actually like usually it's like carpeted or something and there's like railings like you can get up there okay. and watch and so all the kids would be up there and you know i was walking to the end to get off and like you know there's a gap in the bars where you can mm -hmm. hop down and it's maybe only like four feet up or whatever I am a stupid kid. As I'm walking, my friend says something to me, and I turn to talk to him, take a step, fall off, just fall on my wrist, and just break it. <sighs> and so my mom takes me to the emergency room, and we're there for so long. You know, sometimes you're there for so long. And I asked her about this later. I'm like, how did I accomplish that? But I was complaining. I was like, I want to go. I want to leave. And my mom's like, your wrist is broken. Like, you, you're, like, almost protruding. <sighs> and I was like, it doesn't hurt that bad. And she's like, oh, really? She's like, all right, fine. If you move your arm, we can leave. And <laughs> the bone was not connected, right? The bone was not connected. So I moved my arm. <laughs> and it hurt. 
And Ugh. she's like, well, that's why you have to stay. And I was <laughs> like, you're a liar. <laughs> <laughs> and I asked her later, I was like, how did I do that if the bone wasn't connected? And she's like, I have no idea. <laughs> it's just <laughs> sheer willpower. Yeah. Uh, and then one time I broke my hand. I-, I was like in like seventh grade and I was just goofing off with my friends. And I just like, we were like wrestling or something like that. And I just like churned a spin. And I just like hit my hand on like a corner of a wall. Mm-hmm. But it's ironic because the wall even had like a hard plastic like cover on it. Okay. <laughs> and I still like shattered my Ow. hand. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, so I, I think everyone should experience. Uh, nope, not me. Y- no, right. no, thanks. All right. I'm good. Just you wait. I'm just a girly pop <laughs> that <laughs> never has to be injured ever. Oh, okay. All right. That's fair, I thanks. guess. I didn't think of it that way. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Let's fix the do you have <laughs> something on your uh, that you would like to share? One what? of your, one of your ideas. What was the question? You. Did oh you yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. I've I been was, on a like, roll. What's gonna, what's if you on? would like so to. So the only things I've got aren't like questions, but um, uh, I saw a TikTok. Are you familiar with iPhone finger? No. So apparently, a lot of us, the way that you hold your iPhone, because mm. they're so heavy and for years, you may have like an indent. So how do you hold your phone? Yeah, so I try to be uh, mindful with so not mindful doing the it. pinky, yeah, um, because I I just feel that, and I have carpal tunnel, and uh, my okay. and it really bothers me. I try not to hold my phone for long periods of time. Period. Because okay, of so it. then you're That's you're bad. not going to be a good example for yeah. this because I was going to have us compare our iPhone fingers, and oh. I realized I have like a little indent on my finger, but you you do better about it. But no, no, well, it would be like your pinky. Yeah, but you don't you don't overly weigh it. Hold on. How do you know? Like, look at your fingers uh-huh. and, like, see how this finger oh. like kind of goes, has, like, a little dent right here. What do you guys tell us in the chat? I feel like my, I'm seeing it with mine. Look, at, wh- look at the camera. Which, this, ha- which this, hand? It would be this one, right? Yeah, you have a small. I feel like I see small, it. Yeah, dent I right see, see it. That? Yeah, mine's pretty, uh, pretty, All right. pretty prominent. Do so, you everybody, look at your look fingers. At your, do you have an iPhone pinkies. finger? Yeah. Do you have a phone or, finger? Or wherever you do it. Like, some people, like, you know, will... Whatever you do. Yeah. I feel like I totally see the little bending action that's happening. It's easier to see on camera. No, I think really so? see it in person. Right? You see that? You see a little bend? Yeah. Right? I do. A little er, it's got a little curve to it. Interesting. So that was my first thing. <laughs> iPhone finger. <laughs> Solid. Yeah. Solid. Yeah, you're like, hey, we're down the comments. We're going to do it. And I'm like, iPhone finger. <laughs> Jesus. It's still good. Scabs. I'm, yeah, sorry, guys. Sorry. I'm, um, you're I'm taking us on a ride. I really am. Mm-hmm. And uh, you're stuck with us. Yep. But, you know, if I'm too much, just m- mute it when I'm talking <laughs> and then unmute it when Dorothy's talking. And I, I have no qualms with that. I, I told her before we started that it's she's the star, and I think we all agree with that. I'm my whole life. I have always been happy to be like second. Like I'm happy in the role of like funny best friend. Like mm-hmm. like I played a lot of you know male leads, whatever. I feel like I <laughs> si- excel in like the funny best friend, the second build, the supporting. Because uh, in my mind, from an acting perspective, like like I think. The most talented actors are the supporting actors, the character actors, because everybody can kind of be the lead. Because it's for the most part, it's everything scripted out for you. You have all the information you need, but to be able to come into a role with less information, but still be like as three dimensional, and to be okay with like supporting someone else, but still shine. And you know, I always thought it was cool, like when somebody would come in and be like, "Oh, they stole the show." Like it's not even about that. Yeah. So I'm cool with that. All right. Now. My second one is, <laughs> have you, oh, now it's going to get a little dark. Okay. So, uh, uh, content dark. warning, oh. uh, child acting. Uh, have you been following any of the quiet on sets? I haven't watched it yet, but it's on the list okay, you to should. be watched. So then uh, I guess obviously, but have you, do you know who like the main like child actor that like came forward is? Like, have you been f- Not seen really. Like I've seen people yeah. mention like Drake. <laughs> yeah. Bell. So, yeah. Okay. So do you want to know? Like, I, it's not a spoiler, but I mean, it's like episode three or something. Okay. But yeah, that's who it is. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I've, I've <laughs> seen just like the flip of like, cause everybody like hated him and yeah. he got pretty much outcasted. Yeah. out of here yeah and now there's like this flip of yeah. everybody showing yeah. the sympathy towards totally. him and everybody's putting josh under fire so yeah. i'm trying to figure out so like here, I'll, I'll give you the lowdown yeah. of it so 
Yeah, so Quiet on Set, for those of you that aren't familiar, it's currently, I think, like a three episode uh, like docu-series. They're oh, coming out with three? Yeah, they're coming out three or four. I think three, and they're coming out with a fourth, or maybe four, and they're coming out with a fifth. Uh, and I think it's coming out like in the next couple days. But it, it uh, follows just kind of the, um, the toxic workplace cultures of these child shows from the 90s to the 2000s. So it starts with like all that and like that kind of thing. And Particularly it, Nickelodeon, mm-hmm. right? Yes, yeah, because it follows uh, Dan Schneider, mm-hmm. who was like either an executive producer or the showrunner of this. And then uh, this whole time there, you know, because this has been like a court case, like there was this guy named Brian Peck who was sentenced to jail for like a child, I guess like endangerment and like, I guess like, you know, graping. Uh, but the child was never named, obviously. And then third episode, it comes out, and it's Drake Bell. Oh. Um, so there's two, I guess, male figures. There's Dan Schneider, who has never been, like, convicted of anything. But he was the one, like, promoting, like, the toxic workplace. And, and you guys can jump into it, but, like, just a bunch of stuff. Uh, and it follows, like, a lot of these big people's journeys. Uh, like, you know, like Amanda Bynes, Drake Bell. Yeah. Uh, as for Josh Peck coming under fire, unrelated to Brian Peck, who is the pedophile mm. who is the, the registered sex offender pedophile <coughs> but what's interesting about it is once it came out is like drake bell was like in the courtroom during this and the only people that came to support him was like his br- his mother and his brother and then brian peck's side because he was like a famous hollywood coach was filled with hollywood executives mm. and now these court documents have been unsealed a bunch of famous actors wrote letters in support of Brian Peck, including oh. like James Marsden oh. and some of the Boy Meets World people. Mm. <clears throat> so that's what was going on with that. In terms of Josh Peck's uh, hate, that has kind of been popping up because um, people felt like he just wasn't supporting Drake. Uh. Or even like a couple years ago, like there was, like you said, there was the drama with Drake Bell and like he wasn't like invited to the wedding and stuff and everyone was like Team Josh. But now everybody's just like feeling Josh is look like phony or something like that. Interesting. Um, <coughs> but yeah. that's kind of the long and short of yeah, it. Yeah, I gotta watch it. You gotta watch it. It's yep. a hard watch. I'm excited for the next episode. Yep. But my question, wh- like for us to talk about, is like if your child was like a famous actor, or whatever, like how would you protect them? And so what's really sad about the Drake mm. Bell thing is, is his father was his manager. Mm. And his father knew that Brian was a bad egg. Um. And and there's all these stories of parents trying to, like, l- you know, whistleblow, but there was, like, a fear of retaliation, especially mm. back in the 90s and 2000s. And it was like, well, if a parent was too much of a stink, like, you got cut from the show, yeah. you got whatever. And so this Brian guy was such, like, a predator, he, like, weaseled his way. He was involved in Drake's every aspect of his life. Mm. He got Drake and his mom to convince him that the dad was, like, stealing money. They got rid of him. And Brian wow. inserted himself into his life, and he was like driving to him in auditions, and he was having Drake spend the night at his house and Ugh. all this stuff. And what is so sad is Drake Bell's dad said to the mom once he got cut out, he's like, "Listen, no matter what you do, I know we're divorced. Do not let that man be alone yeah. with our son. Oh, wow. Do not." And she proceeds to let him like drive oh, into auditions and geez. spend the night at his house and all this stuff. Um, and so it was just so so sad. And like when Drake eventually told his dad about what happened he's like yeah this guy like he got convicted he's like i knew it i always had a bad feeling he's like i'm so glad we kept you away from him and like drake couldn't even tell him in that moment but so then my question is like what what would you do in this situation where like it's your child's dream let's say it's the 2000s so we don't have the resources of like social media and all this stuff like how would how would you navigate that Yeah, I mean, I think the biggest thing is you literally have to decide that your child's safety comes above all else. Never let them be alone. Even, yeah, even at risk of um, being cast in like a bad Mm -hmm. light. Mm -hmm. If you're, you know, saying like, no, I refuse to keep you around this person. You you just have to know like that is the first and foremost pri- yeah. priority them not to be alone not to like get too close but imagine you're like you know from like not a well-off family and like yeah. all of a sudden like your 12 year old child is like the economic provider for your whole family yeah no i get it but literally mm. it's just yeah deciding that like totally. your safety comes above everything else no matter what we'll make it work but that will live with you forever. If you ever get hurt by any of this, Definitely. that will be with you forever. We can always figure out the money, but your like state of being, your safety, yeah. your mental health, like that's shit that like 
He'll yeah. never forget that shit. You it's know? so sad that these like parents just failed, and like uh, w- w- there are still so many stories that like we'll never know about. Yeah. And as for Drake Bell, like the hate that he was getting, um, so it, it, uh, he went to Latin America for a while. Yeah. And he was like a very big. Yeah, singer he blew there. up over there. And yeah. I guess his his stage name was like Drake. Campbell or like whatever Bell is in Spanish, mm. but he he cleared that up. He's like, I didn't change my name legally. He's like, the media just like took wind of that. Mm. Um, however, he did uh, like he was part of a case of like child endangerment. Mm-hmm. Was he like um, dating and something yeah? So what younger? happened was he like uh, made contact with this girl, and they there was never like a physical relationship. Mm. It was just like all over text. And this has come out. You guys can check out the court documents, whatever. It turns out she had, like, lied about her age. Oh. And once he found out that she was underage, like, he cut off contact. But oh. then she, like, tried to, like, get back in contact and, like, oh. blackmail him and all these things. And then, like, came out with all these allegations against him. Mm. But he took responsibility and he pleaded guilty. He's like, yeah, I did send those texts that child endangerment. But there was no, but like. He didn't know her age? Yeah, he didn't know her age. Um, and then once he did, he, like, you know, cut things off. Um, and that's it that doesn't really sound yeah. like but like again the media kind of went with it and yeah. like people to this day think that he's like a pedophile and this and that and like and i'm not making excuses for him and like you guys can check out the court cases mm. and like he did some not good things um but it's it's false to say that like he like engaged in like sexual acts or had a physical relationship or whatever but when you think about it in the context of like what happened to him when well, he was like yeah. 14, 15, yeah. whatever. These things usually come full circle. <clears throat> yeah. yeah. But anyways, that's that's the long and short. I recommend everybody to check yeah, it out. Yeah, quite on set. Um, just so we can be aware and like try to do better in the future. Mm-hmm. And like this Dan Schneider guy. And what's crazy is this Brian Peck character, he only went to jail for like 15 months. Damn. Yeah. Have you seen the photo that the Nickelodeon splat symbol is yeah, like the same like shape as Epstein? Oh, I think we're thinking of something yeah. else. That is like uh, I forget what Epstein's which one Island. it is. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. There's one that looks like a foot too, and then yeah. And everybody's just looking back at Dan Schneider's work. Like you yeah. look at Victoria's. Oh, and stuff. There's, like, there's so, so much many nasty clips. Like, yeah, yeah. There's like a clip of Ariana like literally like giving like a hand job to a potato. Yeah, and, like all this <laughs> stuff, and it's just like yeah, these these were s- these were things that like I grew up on, like yeah. all that. Like I used to watch that, like Drake yep. and Josh. Oh like, yeah, we used to all watch that, and it was oh, something yeah. like even my parents enjoyed. Oh yeah, and it's just so heartbreaking that it's like. These kids that brought so much joy to us were yep, just we're being going through so much. Yeah. Yep. Sorry, that's that's what I had. Well, yeah. well let's continue on with the heaviness. Yes, yes. Um, wait, first I'll do a, a light one because we're talking about TV. Yeah. Um, Emily Ray asked uh, in regards to New Girl. So mm-hmm. we know your Nick is yeah. what she said. Mm-hmm. But who is Dorothy? And Ooh. I'd like you to answer How much first have you before I answer. How much have I watched? You've watched it. All of that over and over and over again. You know, I wouldn't, I know I'm like Nick, but I feel like, I don't know if Zach is Nick, like in real life, as Mm -hmm. opposed to like my persona. Mm -hmm. We'll discuss. You, (laughs) hmm. And uh, you guys can comment below as well. Who do you think I am on the show? (laughs) You know, I kind of feel like you are a CC. Mm Mm-hmm. But I feel like you're. You, I feel like you're eighty percent CC, twenty percent Schmidt. Oh Schmidt! <laughs> <laughs> who do you? Who did you think you were? You're certainly not Jess. You're not Nick. I don't think you're a Winston. But I, I think you're. I think you're. I think you're CC. You know. In a lot of ways. When I was thinking about it, I didn't even let my mind go to like the guy characters. I was You're immediately thinking just thinking characters? among the girls. Yeah, so but that, you, that does make so much were? more sense. I was thinking like on the surface, I think when people meet me, yeah. they think CC, yeah. like more CC vibes. But then when I get really comfortable with people and they get to know me, they see more of the Jess oh. come out. See, when I think of Jess, I think of like very awkward, very like quirky and bubbly. Like you are like too like charismatic. I feel like to be mm. Jess. Like you, you wouldn't like is Jess fabricates socially. She I- yeah creates socially awkward situations yeah. because of who she is. Yeah, and she like like I think I think you might have some Jessica Day hobbies. You know. Yeah. But no. C- Schmidt, C- Schmidt makes sense. Yes. <laughs> yeah. But you're not fully Schmidt yeah. because like you know he's a man and he's like a Republican and that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. But like Cece's a self starter. Mm-hmm. She is someone that everybody like considers like beautiful. She's somebody that people like might like look down at like at like their first like interaction, but she's also like a girl boss. Yeah. Like she gets fucking shit done. Yeah. 
But then you have a little bit of that, like that Schmidt, like I feel like <laughs> just kind of like passion. <laughs> <laughs> And like yep. you know, like you probably both have like similar like families, like Republican families. <laughs> so who do you think you are? Because you said I Zach really is not Nick. Well, do you? I don't like because I feel like people see me in my videos and they go like, "You are exactly Nick Miller." And mm-hmm. I feel like I'm I feel like I'm Nick Miller esque when I'm being like bombastic. Mm-hmm. Like you who know me very well. What would you say? I would say I'm. Yeah. You. What would you say? I I would honestly uh, agree with. Nick, a hundred percent through and through. <laughs> uh, I'm trying to think of like other other characters on the show. The only thing that like stops me with Nick is like, I feel like I'm not as messy as Nick. Well, of course, like yeah. I, there's traits of sure, Nick that yeah. you are not. And but if like, you had to say who you were, yeah, maybe more I guess so. Yeah, to, yeah, yeah. But I, I feel like him. if I look different, I feel like a lot of it has to do with my looks too. Like where, like I'm the same mm. archetype as him. Like. Especially season one. We're probably almost the same age as mm. season one Nick. He was probably like 32. I think it's, for me, it's more just like the way you talk. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I'll take it. I'll but take who it. who do you think? I would say, I would say like a combination of like sh- probably Nick and Schmidt. Yeah? Yeah. Or maybe what Nick What part of you do you see Schmidt? I can get pretty like OCD and anal. Uh. And like particular, and like I, I really get into like cooking and cleaning. Mm-hmm. Um, I think closer to, sh- I think Nick has an aloofness that Schmidt doesn't. I think Schmidt can occasionally be like, yeah, and I and I have that in me. Yeah. Um, Do you see any Winston in you? <laughs> yeah, and like I love my cat. Yeah, you know, and uh, I see some of Winston in me. Yeah, to be and honest. like maybe maybe maybe, maybe we handle romance similarly. <laughs> <laughs> me and Winston handle romance. Like falling in love with everybody and then just getting really into it or yeah. just like liking people that don't like you back or mm-hmm. like then just becoming like really absorbed in a relationship and absorbing their personality traits. Yeah. Yeah. What about Friends characters? Do you, have you ever watched any Friends? I have, but I'm not You don't want to be any of them? I just, it's been so long since I've seen it. I'm not okay. as well versed. Who's the worst Friends girl? character? Let's say it, let's say it on three. Do you have one top of mind? Oh, you like don't remember worst any of it? one? Yeah, like I feel like there's a clear one who's like terrible. But if you don't think terrible? so, that's okay too. I who do you think? I think I, I think Ross is so uh, annoying. Mm. And like I'm just not as enough well versed in Yeah, I watched it one time. He through, just like, like is again. uh I don't know. He's just I just hate guys like that. And like yeah. even the whole like we were on a break thing, <laughs> like I'm like, bro, you were broken up for X amount of time. Like, there's no situation in where you're justified in sleeping with someone else. Like, if you want to sleep with someone else, that's fine. But don't try to gaslight your partner into being like, well, we were on a break. It's like, even if you were fully broken up, it's not going to be a a, a fun thing for your partner to be like, oh, within 24 hours, (laughs) you hooked up with someone else. Like, those are not the actions of someone that is, like, thinking of someone else. And, like, that's this whole shtuck. Mm. And he's like, he's just so pretentious mm. and he thinks he's better than people mm-hmm. because he works in a museum. Mm. And uh, I don't, I, I don't know. I, I never liked the neurotic nerdy guy who obsesses over like the hot blonde girl, you mm. know, like even I feel like Leonard from Big Bang Theory isn't as bad, mm-hmm. but just that whole archetype of like, yeah. uh, and I'm like, bro, girls don't fucking care. That's mm. your insecurity. Mm. Like if you were just a nice person, especially as you get older, if you're a nice person, and you make okay money, and you're hygienic, and you are you <laughs> care about them. You don't have to be hot, bro. <laughs> like that's your own. Like hi- I was a nerd in high school. Like yeah. Ah. So who's your favorite on Friends? Uh, I like Phoebe and Joey. Solid. Yeah. 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 Somebody also asked from new new girl mm-hmm. Emily um, said, "Who do you like better, Sam or Fancy Man?" Remember Fancy Man, the older guy that Jess dates? The daddy? Not Schmidt's dad, right? The guy who was married, and then they wind up breaking up because she's like, I need passion. Yeah. And Sam was the doctor guy? Yeah. I like the doctor guy because his arc was funny because Jess did him so dirty, and then he got so mad about Mm. it, and then they wound up back together. And like, I just like the one where she's like bringing him brownies, and he just gets into brownies. Yeah. And And the the older guy just was like kind of boring. Yeah. That's fair. Story wise. Why do girls <laughs> like much older men? <laughs> <laughs> like it's in all of our th- did we talked about this a little bit last time did with like didn't we? Or no, we talked about this when we went to go get brunch. 
Uh-huh. Like the whole like oh, yes, the whole thing did. where it's like she's seventeen and he's a six hundred year old vampire. <laughs> or even in New Girl where like I mean obviously it was age appropriate. She's young thirties and he's probably like late forties. But yeah. like why do women like older men? Much older men. Or some women I should say. Or most women. Uh, enough so that it's <laughs> it's a uh literary trope. Yeah. I mean, my m- me myself, yeah. I had for a long time been more inclined towards guys that were much older yeah i think a lot of it comes from like this false narrative that they're more mature or like emotionally stable which 99 percent of the time is not the case at all turns out the guy 15 years older than you that dates women 15 years younger than him probably has the maturity of the person he's dating yeah um Other than, like, the obvious thing that, like, older women that are, like, okay, I want, like, somebody who has their shit together for more logical reasons. But I think, generally speaking, like, younger girls, too, tend to be more inclined towards... But what about about female writers that are writing these, like, fictitious things? Like, my first question is, like, why are we all, as a culture, obsessed with, like, teenagers? (laughs) Because, like, I I guess I could understand, like, the male writers being, like, she's 17 and perfect. And I'm like, all right, you're a fucking creep. But, like, Sarah J. Mass or, like, Stephanie Myers or whatever. And they're like, she's a teenager and he's 600. Yeah. But with the mind of a teenager. (laughs) Like, why why can't everyone just be 25 and happy? (laughs) No. Yeah. What's up with that? I know. I know. We we talked about this a bit over brunch and I was saying how like. It's just the allure of the forbiddenness. Yeah. I mean, I think the real question is we have to ask like is how far back this goes to. Um, Because I think for a long time, too, that was just kind of like the the thing like you men were always after like whatever the the most youthful yeah fresh I know royalty in like the 13th century they'd be like she's 14 she's ready to be married and I'm like that's disgusting oh, bro man she yeah can't and even I do algebra I at that age I still can't do algebra <laughs> <laughs> well you're not ready for marriage I'll tell you that right now that's fine by me <laughs> <laughs> you better find a good man to do algebra for you. <laughs> So I say to my cat all the time, like, I don't know why. It's just something. I'm like, you're so stupid, bro. You don't even know math. Yeah. It's just like, a, it's just I an insult. You. Yeah. How dare you? you well, say I'm, such l- mean I'm like, he can't survive biscuit. without me. Guy can't even do math. Because Biscuit needs <laughs> to do math. <laughs> I think to survive in this world, you have to have a basic understanding of arithmetic. As a cat? <sighs> no, not as a cat. Not exactly. Not exactly. <laughs> I mean, it still would be helpful. That's like, episode. that's like, I know, yeah. Biscuit being like the opposite and be like, yeah, I just can't leave Zach alone because he can't just he la- can't sh- land yeah, on his feet jump. from tall heights. The other <laughs> night, it was so funny. I was like, I was being a degenerate. I was up really, really late. I've been struggling with sleeping. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, in my apartment, I have, for those of you that haven't been in my apartment, <laughs> a.k.a. every <laughs> single person listening to this except for Dorothy and my mother. And the creeper and outside the, your window. Whoa, third story. <laughs> that's I got props that they're up there. <laughs> Uh, but I, I have a I have a vertical cat tree. Mm. So there's a couple different types of cat trees. There are the ones that are low to the ground and kind of spread out, but my boy likes to climb and be high. So I have a I have a floor to a ceiling cat tree. And occasionally there's like a little basket up there that he can sleep in. And I'm like playing on my computer. It's probably like two or three AM and all of a sudden I just hear <laughs> 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 Oh shit. <laughs> and I look over and this fuck had fallen from the top of the tree and it's like it's probably six feet up, Dang. down onto the ground. And I'm like, what happened? And if I had to guess, he probably, because like he's getting kind of big and yeah. like he's very agile, but he's also an orange cat. So mm-hmm. eventually he fall, he like misses stuff. Yeah. <laughs> so he, I think he was just tired and like went to readjust and just fucking fell. Damn. And he was so embarrassed. <laughs> he was so, he wasn't hurt. But he was so, he was like a little but he was so embarrassed he was doing that thing where like he couldn't sit and he was just like blinking and blinking and blinking <laughs> and blinking and I was like it's all right guy it's all right guy but uh, have they ever taken any like bad tumbles oh yeah I have <laughs> I have Haven't most they, like, of knocked them. over this thing uh, <laughs> the, the they've d- knocked over everything any yeah. surface of this household just know it's been knocked over at some point the lamp the ladder back there. Everything has been knocked over by my cats. Yeah. But I have um, a video footage, actually. So you know how, like, um, above my balcony, I have, like, a screen glass door yeah. window things. And above there, there's, like, where the blinds hang from, that, mm-hmm. like, 
thin panel yeah. that the blinds hang from up there. I have video on my phone. Obsidian. <laughs> <laughs> just trying to get through. <laughs> Literally climbed up there. This thing is so <laughs> tiny. And he's just up there. And I pull my phone out. And his legs are like wobbling because this <laughs> thing's so tiny. And you just see him tumble to the ground and then start like, meow, meow. and I'm like, you did it, bro. Like, yeah. not me. Yeah, same thing with my guy. He like, was so embarrassed. I was like, it's all right, man. Nobody saw. I can't help you. You're too high up, homie. Oh, gosh. Yeah. Cat activities. Mm -hmm. um, should we go deep? I have yeah. a deep question. Yeah, that'll be good. Um, Sammy X said, heavy question. Oh. I'm struggling with my mental health and one of my abroad friends is also struggling. I'm trying to be there for them, but it's taxing for my mental health too. Do you have advice on how to help someone but not feel like a bad friend? Yeah. First piece of advice. Have you tried being happy? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> that's, like, that's like my favorite thing that people like me and my buds Just will joke be around. Happy. I'm like, man, I'm not doing well. They're like, have you tried not <laughs> sucking? And I'm like, damn, I haven't tried it. No, but that's a tough one, and I'm I'm sure you've been in situations mm -hmm. like that. We've talked about I've had situations like that, and mm -hmm. like at the end of the day, someone who, who is truly your friend will be respectful and reciprocative if you're just honest with them. Mm -hmm. Like, hey, I love you with all my heart. I know you're struggling. I'm struggling too. I'm trying my best to be there for you. But unfortunately, and then say your boundary. Yeah. And and maybe you guys can find like a middle ground. Like, you know, if they want to talk every day, be like, listen, like it, it would be more helpful for me if we like went once a week or whatever. And you, you can get into the weeds. And unfortunately, if they are someone that doesn't ultimately have your best interests at art or if they are too wrapped up in their own struggle, they're going to lash out. Mm -hmm. And as much as it sucks because you care for this person, um, then that's not someone that is deserving of your support. Yeah, I've actually had this exact conversation with yeah. uh, a lot of my close friends. So one of the things I started doing, because um, I tend to be that person that uh, a lot of people come to when they're really going through it. And um, what I started to say is I will legitimately tell them, um, hey, I'm just telling you, I'm not really in a great headspace right now. Just know I love you. And I'm always here for you. I can't really be that positive bubble of, you know, yeah. uh, optimism that you need right now. Because um, I've got my own stuff going on. But just know, like, I always love you. And, yeah. and I'll leave it at that. Yeah. And something new me and my friend Allie have started doing is, like, she will text me and be like, hey, can I, are you in a good headspace for me to talk to you about something right now? Yeah. And I'll literally say like, yeah, I'm doing great. What's up? And then she'll be able to like reel yeah. off whatever is going on. Totally. And that's been uh, a game changer because a real friend that cares about you too. Yeah. Will understand like, okay, it's not all about right. my they, shit all the time. Like, and they wouldn't want to drag okay. you down. Yeah. You know, they, they would like me as a friend, like I don't want, um, someone to support me at the detriment of themselves. Yes. Yep. So hopefully yeah. that helps honesty. But unfortunately, you got to sometimes have those uncomfortable conversations. Yeah. Yeah, too. And if you literally find that this person just like always just drains you 24 seven, they don't they won't understand that you will likely have to just start to pull back yeah. a little bit. You got to pull back yeah. your and energy. Some, sometimes you got to put friendships in certain boxes. Yeah. And that sucks, but, you know, yep. it is what it is. Yep, but you got to be mindful of your mental health. Yeah. First and foremost. Yeah, yes. 100%. Chesley asks, do you think people can change, or do you think they are who they are for the rest and will always be for the rest of their lives? I think people can change. I think anyone can change at any moment. However, you cannot change someone. Someone mm -hmm. has to change themselves. Yep. So I think people can change. Um, but they are the only ones that can make themselves change. Yep. I totally agree. I think people can completely change. I mean, I mean like 180 become a whole brand new person. We are yeah. so capable of change, but you have to want to. Yeah. Um, move to another country, change your name. It's that easy. You can literally forget have everything a whole you ever knew. New, yeah. Leave your family behind. Start new. Okay. Well, <laughs> we're going to watch the go, go out for a carton of cigarettes and never come back. <laughs> 
Is there a new life calling to you, Zach? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Leave your children behind. Start a new family. Never tell them about anything. <laughs> then when you're 65 to 70 and one of your kids <laughs> does an ancestry, 23 and me, oh they'll my reach gosh. out. But by that point, you're already almost dead. And like, it's all right. That happened to my buddy. What? He, fa- <laughs> <laughs> he found out that he like had a whole other brother that his dad never told him about. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, they like got in contact, and he like <laughs> helped his brother like contact his dad. Uh, did Holy their dad? Holy smokes! Yeah, isn't that crazy? That is insane. Yeah. Wow. Well, um, <laughs> don't do what yeah, Zach don't, said. Don't listen to me, but guys. Uh, <laughs> don't listen. Anything I say on this podcast, don't take it seriously unless Dorothy agrees with me. <laughs> <laughs> like, like when I say something, Dorothy goes like, "Yeah, I agree." Then you know I was being serious. When I say something, Dorothy goes like, "Oh." Then it's like, all right. And we already <laughs> decided I'm Nick, so I feel like I'm allowed to just say outlandish things. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. This is for entertainment purposes. <laughs> uh, when we created our YouTube page and our Spotify, you have to select a category of like what you belong to. Yeah. And I just put lifestyle entertainment. Mm-hmm. So if you're not entertained, tell me what I need to do better. <laughs> <laughs> if we're not entertaining you, I don't oh know what God. we're doing. Cause oh, God. Oh, God. <laughs> we have one last final All viewer right. question and yeah. then we can inspire people. Sure, I'll do my and best. And wrap wrap it yeah, up. Yeah, let's get out of here. <laughs> um Jojo Ginger. Whoa. What a name. Love it. You really fake. Either way, you're accepted here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, actually, I think um I I believe their comment, if I'm not correct, somebody commented, I actually resonate with both of you because I was born Zach. But then became Dorothy. Whoa. So you with, upgraded. With, with Let me tell you that right now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you moved to the winning side <laughs> of these things. One of us has our mental health in check, but we're not telling with you which. With the hair. With the <laughs> hair. Oh, All right. That's what I was yes. talking about. Born a ginger and then became a ginger. What was real? <laughs> <laughs> so anyways, anyway. Jojo Ginger says. <laughs> <Your face. laughs> yeah, yeah. Anyways, the so question I mean, is. What has been your favorite project slash role, and what are your dream roles? You know, somebody asked me this the other day at the bar, mm-hmm. and I feel like it's like such a standard question that like non-actors ask you because mm-hmm. they don't know what to 100%. say. They're like, "What's been your favorite thing?" Yep. And um, y- when I'm in the biz, like usually y- you have to kind of like lie a little bit in <laughs> in a sense where like because like okay, so I'll start. My favorite project is a web series that never got off the ground. Like mm-hmm. it never went anywhere. And it was something I did early on. They like the actor dropped out or whatever. They got some funding, but the people behind it, like it was just these group of girls, and it was like their passion project. And the set was just so nice and so inclusive. And I've done a lot of sets at this point, and like it's just rare to have that good of an energy. And I really connected with the writers and the producers and the directors, and I loved my character. It was very much like a, it was like a role like a young Joseph Gordon-Levitt could have played. Like he was like. He was like funny, but also goofy and charismatic, uh, but like insecure. But uh, so it was just so much fun. It was so funny, and I really, really connected with it. But the problem with passion projects is they get set aside, and mm-hmm. all of the people that were like leading this project like went on to do other stuff. Yeah. Like I think one of the head writers then moved on to like Supergirl for a couple oh, seasons. Oh wow! And so, but I can't just like come out and say that like in LA in the business because yeah. it sounds like I've done nothing. Yeah. So I usually <laughs> start off with, and I'm like, oh, you know, like I've enjoyed the bigger productions I've done. You know, yeah. like. HBO and Snapchat and ABC and you can hire me for network TV. Yeah, but then I follow it up with I'm like, but like from an acting perspective, like what gets me going as yeah. a creative artist? And so yeah, it, it never went anywhere. I hope it one day it does something. It was called yeah. Fishing. Mm. Um, I think we did like we did a bunch of we did like eight or nine episodes, mm. and it like it just was so cool to just like be part of like an ensemble piece. Yeah, because when I do like network TV and stuff like. Everybody there is like freelance for the yeah. most part. Like the director, especially for TV, is just been outsourced. Like you have producers that are just making sure that like the integrity of the show. So when you show up, you have to just be so confident of being like, okay, I'm a cog in the wheel. They are getting this done by the end of the day. It's not about me. It's mm. not about my performance. I'm showing up and I am just doing a good job. And the best note is no notes. Like on TV, like you don't want to, you don't want to be that guy that's like. But what about <laughs> blah, blah. you just show up and you're like, did this? And they're like, cool, yeah. great. Let's move on. Yeah. But uh, th- so that's that's the long of it. What's your dream role? You know, I would love to do like. I would love to do like a grounded, like familial black comedy. 
Mm-hmm. So I would like I would love to be like brothers with Timothy shampoo and conditioner, and like our dad is like Tom Hanks, <laughs> and it's like it's like a it's like a cry until you laugh, mm-hmm. like dark comedy. Um, but I would also love to be like on a multi cam sitcom, like a New Girl, yeah. Office, Parks and Rec. Um, <laughs> but then this is why I struggle because like. I feel like in L.A., actors tend to specialize. Mm-hmm. You're like, oh, I'm a comedic actor. I study at UCB, Groundlings, whatever. Yeah. Or like, I'm a drama actor. Like, I only want to do film. It's yeah. like, no, I'm, an, I'm a network actor, whatever. And I feel like I'm lame because I'm like, I want to do a little yeah, bit of all of it. Yeah, and I'm like, what's the point of training as an actor yeah. if you like aren't training to do it all? Yeah. Um, so I would love to do all of those things. Totes. So it's, a, it's such a gimmick answer. What's your dream? To do it all. No, I <laughs> get like, it. <laughs> it's like I, I really want to do it all. And like I feel like I have that capability of like I could be Nick. Uh, but then you could also put me like in an A twenty four thing where like I'm yeah. a druggie and I'm sucking Timothy's cock, you know? Uh, it would be a hit. <laughs> what beautiful boy. <laughs> or uh call me by your name. I just feel like we'd have such good chemistry, he and I. This clip yeah. is gonna be <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> is this gonna be used yeah. so like yeah. five years from now yeah. after your film comes out yeah. with I, Timothy. I'm older than him too. They're gonna put this clip and they're gonna be like, yeah. Zach's been manifesting <laughs> yeah, this. this oral scene with you. <laughs> like like uh what was it? Saltburn. Like I could be Barry what's his face. You totally good. Yeah. yeah, Sabrina, give me a call. <laughs> Just kidding. Yeah. Don't call me. Okay. Don't call me. I don't. Uh, stop, Sabrina. You're embarrassing yourself. Okay. <laughs> so, <yeah. laughs> this is why we can't do it too late in the day. I get I get weirder. You get little as late giggles. I think you always have an excuse for your behavior. <sighs> Last time it was the caffeine. Yeah. Now you said it's the late yeah. night giggles. But I like having excuses. <laughs> <laughs> I like blaming other. You heard things. it here. Yeah. So what about you, Dream Rolls? Well, um, my dream role is specifically, I kind of want like the, wait, hold on. Actually, yeah, I even just saw that. Yeah. Okay. So ask it again. Yeah. We look great. Oh, ask it again. <laughs> <laughs> uh, dream rolls? Dream rolls me. Mine is a specific type of arc. Like I mm-hmm. want the villain revenge arc. Ooh. So specifically like somebody who starts off maybe more um, like good hearted, but then mm-hmm. like something happens and betrayed. then she goes, yeah. And she goes on like a killing spree to get Ooh. revenge of like all Bill. the people. Yeah. I like love that. those type of characters. That's awesome. I think yeah. it would also be cool to do like a time traveling role. Oh. Um, and then that way I could like, because I feel like. two ages? Like that type? Yeah, ages and also like hair. I feel like I could mm. make my hair look like every era. Like I could start in like 70s, 80s and then just keep cutting it and mm. like go and go and go and go. Mm. So that'd be cool too. Yeah. 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 My, honestly, my favorite character role I've probably played thus far is probably the one I played last week. The mob Cause, one? Yeah, because she's evil, mm-hmm. sexy. Oh, okay. Um, Like mean and blunt but also like viciously loyal and sweet to the people that like are in her like family and rich filthy oh. rich just so that's it's just like just perfectly like, so your style was like yeah. amazing it was mostly my wardrobe yeah but yeah <laughs> i'm sure i'm sure they they probably like saw your wardrobe and was literally like, perfect no they perfect. had all this wardrobe from the investors but then they saw what i brought for the character and they were like actually that's just way wear better. that yeah, yeah. Like, way better <laughs> Yeah. They had no idea that they casted the perfect person for this role. You know, what can I say? I am Vivian. Yeah. Ooh. It, uh, no, I put on. Is that how you were? The voice, yeah, for Vivian yeah. was very much. And she's a she smokes too. Yeah. So she was. Did smoke. they give you like fake cigarettes to smoke? Yeah, I had Disgusting. I had to do herbals, and um, everybody else was complaining to me about how bad it yeah. smelled. I'm like, imagine how it is Smoking for me. It. I'm. Were you doing <laughs> the cigarettes, or did they give you like a little like plastic? holder thing that you like the Corella de Vil, like the cigarette No, thing? it was oh. straight straight to. Oh. It wasn't I that. I bet you look cool uh, though. Yeah, yeah. Did I you do actually, like cool um, smoke stuff like blow it out your mouth and then so inhale it through your nose? So they wanted me to do smoke rings yeah. but by the you time. You can't just do that. They asked me so like it was by the time I had that for like I maybe had like a week's notice about yeah. these smoke rings and I don't know how to do them and that particular day they didn't give me the herbal until 30 minutes before and i asked like in the morning like oh can i get one earlier so i could practice and they couldn't until like 30 minutes before we were filming that scene and i was like where i know 
I, I think props was just like yeah. busy with something else. Yeah. And they were like, you can only practice outside. I'm like, I can't do smoke rings outside. Like I have yeah. to be inside yeah, the wind, to bro. be doing it. So I literally, cause because of the pacing of it, yeah. you get like, one shot, two shots before they change frames. It's literally like, yeah. that's it. They were being and unreasonable. I'm like, I'm not going to bother even. I literally just, because I'm blowing smoke in this girl's face. Yeah. And they asked me to blow like a smoke ring in her face. And I just blew the, it, it was fine. It was yeah. still just as fucking evil they're ch- and They're rude. chilling. So yeah. It was, it was oh, it's so fun. Yeah. 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 So that was, that was my favorite this one. Mm. But yeah. So I guess, I guess we can. Wrap it up. Yeah, let's wrap it up. <laughs> Say toodaloo. Total do. Do you have any inspiring words to tell the people? Make Not really. Feel good, no? Nah. Just, just feel one, like shit. One day at a time, guys. Yeah, d- just be happy. <laughs> just Listen, be happy. If you feel like crap, just stop. You know? Just um, get better. No, son. I've been I've been I've been <laughs> I've been back on my uh I've been trying to be back on my like walking, hiking routine. So nice. I've been going on some like five and six milers. Yeah. So it's been good for me. So if you feel like crap, guys, just do your best to get outside. That's what we were talking about yeah, last time. Yeah, just exactly. get in the sun. Yeah. Yeah. What about you? Words of wisdom? Um, I, yeah, I think uh, the biggest thing for me this week is just being mindful uh, the most of what you put your energy towards yeah. and how that grows. And that could mean so many different things. Like if it's a negative thing or, um, or if it's a positive thing, or I, I think I've just been finding lately more and more that now that I have all this time to myself to really focus on my career and my cats mm-hmm. and my friendships and stuff yeah. like that, like I, I'm really finding that I'm flourishing and I'm really enjoying it a lot. I'm way more excited about things yeah. a lot more of the time. So it's just been a process of understanding like where my priorities are, especially as somebody who gets very hyper fixated on so many different new things. I'm like, Oh, I like this. I should do this now. I should do this now. And I've been asking myself a lot more like, okay, but is this at the core, like where your passions really lie and how you want things to really grow in your life? Is it on the vision long term? Is it on the vision board? And honestly, like I know that sounds so cheesy, but at the end of the day, like I find that I get so much energy from the things that have always been my through yeah. lines of what matters to totally. me, like my family, my career. Mm-hmm. Those always give me energy and excitement. Yeah. And uh, I get distracted a lot totally. from different things and I give them my energy and it totally. makes me feel like shit. And so it's yeah, yeah. I've just been learning of like. Oh, like it's it's okay to just be like, no, this is really what my priority is now. Yeah, and that's so important. That. I was thinking about that too. I was like, oh man, like I'm really I'm not inspired about these things. Da, 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 da. But then like one acting gig comes along an audition, and I'm like so stoked about right? it. Right. Like, oh no, I, I I just need to, like you said, just stick to the core. Like yep. w- we chances are we know the things that we need to do or the things that we want to be doing, and like just be gentle on yourself that like you're not super stoked about the stuff that you know branches out from that yep yeah totes well thanks for listening guys this was a chaotic one yes and i'll take responsibility (laughs) for that (laughs) thanks for keeping us on track dorothy yeah well you know (laughs) i try my best (laughs) but please do keep leaving us comments on youtube it's so um helpful and fun yeah definitely what questions you guys want to ask us let us know or any comments about any opinions that yeah let us i feel like there should be some opinions there will probably be some opinions so (laughs) feel free to drop it i'm a big boy (laughs) and we'll discuss and and dorothy will spearhead (laughs) the the christians and (laughs) in your crucifying of me and uh just know that i'm i'm down i'm down (laughs) At midnight, we ride <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> listen, with torches. Listen, I'm down with Jesus. <laughs> just don't make me be in a church. You know what I mean? Because like, I feel like Jesus would like he'd just be walking around, you know, yeah. and performing miracles. And like, you bet your bottom dollar, I'd be there. Yeah, we yeah. got no beef with Jesus. Uh, no beef with him, bro. <laughs> he seems, in my interpretation of him, pretty freaking cool guy. Right? Pretty freaking cool guy. Right? Now the Pope, I don't know about it. Oh well, that's uh, a whole other thing. That's a whole other thing. Whole other thing. Whole other thing. Okay, well, toodaloo. <laughs> Thanks so much. Bye bye. Until next time. Bye bye.